Hi everyone, in this part we're going to get our AI character able to patrol around in a certain route that we lay out. And to do that we're going to make a simple waypoint blueprint and it is going to be a very simple blueprint with really nothing to it. It's just something we can drop into the world basically. We right click in the content browser, new blueprint. It's going to be an actor so we can place it in the world and I'm going to call that BP underscore waypoint. And that's all it needs to be. It's helpful to have it as its own actor blueprint like that so that we can add um, extra information to that blueprint if we want to. All we want to do though is go into our uh, enemy, BP enemy. Let's just close some of this other stuff. Inside BP enemy we want to add another variable which is going to be an array of those waypoints to, you know, to make like a patrol route. Add variable, call it patrol route and set the type of that variable to be our BP waypoint. Um, where is it? BP waypoint object references. And we want that to be a, an array. So over in the details panel next to variable type, we want to change like your single object to array. So now it can hold basically a list of those. And make that an instance editable public variable. Hit compile, and now we can go and lay out this waypoint. Uh, this patrol route even. To do that we select the enemy and then if you made that new um, that new patrol route variable instance editable it will show up here under the default section. You could move it into a you know AI settings if you wanted to. I'm going to leave it in default. And the moment it says we have zero elements in that array. Now what we want to do first of all we'll mark out our patrol route with waypoint. So I'm going to drag one in and just drop it there. Put another one say there. Another one there another one up here. You could change those to use a different sprite if you wanted to. I'm just going to leave it with the you know the default scene route. Then selecting our enemy. Um, where's that? Here we are, patrol route. If we click add four times to add four elements to the array, we know to set these to the patrol route in order, like which order do we want to go around these. You can select them from this list if you want, or you can use the little dropper tool here to pick one from the scene. Like that. Click, click. So now we have a patrol route, which is waypoint, then waypoint two, then waypoint three, then waypoint four, which will be here, then here, then here, then here. Now the rest of the work we're going to need to do is over in the behavior tree. We need first of all a new behavior tree task, which is capable of working, you know, of setting the target to be some waypoint. Just how in the service that we did last time, we set the target as the player. Similar principle, but instead of setting target as player, we're going to set target as one of these waypoints. Uh, okay, so let's make a new task. New task. Annoyingly, again, it doesn't ask us for the name, but we can go back into the here, find where that new BT task blueprint base new is. There it is. Select that, and we'll call this BTT set target as WP, set target as waypoint. Then how is that going to work? Well, first of all, we need the receive tick AI that starts things off, event receive tick AI. Then we need to access a BP enemy blueprint specifically that we cast to BP enemy. If that cast succeeded, we'll be able to access that new patrol route. So get patrol route that we've just made inside the BP enemy. And what we're going to do here is just get whatever the current waypoint is. So we're going to need to add another variable to BP enemy, and it's going to be an integer just to keep track of what waypoint are we currently on. Uh, add variable, and we'll call that current waypoint index. And index, and that doesn't need to be an array, just a normal single variable, and it is of type integer, so just a number. All right, so it's asked which number of this array are we on. Let me show you. Where's it going? Right, so the the patrol route, if you look, has four elements in the array, and we need to know which waypoint are we supposed to be heading towards. The one that is zero, the one that is one, two, or three. So, you know, that's what that int is. Zero, one, two, or three, which waypoint are we going to? In set target as waypoint, the task that we started, we can then do a of our BP enemy a get current waypoint index. If that doesn't show up, you may need to go into BP enemy and just hit compile. Okay. Then we'll say from the patrol route, we're going to do a get, and we're going to get whichever waypoint we're supposed to be on now, so waypoint 0, 1, 2, or 3. And then really we just want to set that as 
our target. Once again, we need a variable of blackboard of type blackboard key selector. We'll call it BB key target, just like we did in the service. Set that to be of type blackboard key selector and make that an instance editable public variable so we can set it through the behavior tree. Then drag that into this task. And just like we did in the service, it's going to be set blackboard key as object, except instead of the player now, we're setting the object to this waypoint. Whichever waypoint was in this array as the index, whatever current waypoint index is. Now all we need to do is add on our finish executes. If we forget those, it will never it will never exit this task. So if we get there, we say we succeeded. If this cast failed, we'll say that finish execute can return that we did not succeed. So we'll leave that unticked. And then that should be that task done. We do need one more task though. We need to be able to increment to the next waypoint. So one more task and then we can wire up our patrolling state. We'll hit new task again. <clears throat> Go back to the content browser, choose a more sensible name than BT task blueprint new. We'll call it BTT for your know, behavior tree task. Next waypoint or next WP. How's that going to work then? Well, all it needs to do is go into our enemy blueprint, add one onto this current waypoint index, and then check whether it's gone too high. So we've only got waypoint 0, 1, 2, and 3. So if we're on waypoint 3 and we add one to look for a non-existent waypoint 4, we need to loop back around to waypoint 0 again. That's what it needs to do in here. So we're going to start with the event receive tick AI, as usual. And then we're going to grab hold of that variable. So first of all, we need to do a cast to BP enemy. There we go. Let's grab hold of that current waypoint index variable, get current waypoint index. And then we're going to do a plus plus or increment int on it. So what that will do is add one to current waypoint index and store the results back in the same variable current waypoint index. But what we need to check now is, has that gone too high? Is that equal to or greater than the length of the waypoints array? So we need the waypoints array by going get patrol route, I think is what we called it. Yes, we did. Then we want to ask, what is the length of that array? And then now we've got that information, we can say, after we've done this plus plus to increment current waypoint index, is it greater than or equal to the length of that array? If it's not, then all's good. We've maybe gone from waypoint one to waypoint two, all fine. If it has gone over or equal to length, then we're trying to access a non-existent waypoint that will be off the end of the array. So we'll put a branch in here. We will check for that. Now, if we have gone too high with our number, we just need to set it back to zero again. So let's click and drag off of BP enemy over here and do a set current waypoint index to zero. And then I'm gonna, oops, wire that into there. Now, just because I, I like to keep my blueprints a little bit tidy, I'm gonna, Double click on this wire to add a few reroute nodes and just route it around like this. Now, how, how tidy you make your blueprint is up to you. If this was false, we don't need to do anything. But in either case, we eventually need to do a finish execute. And you do need to remember it to wire up all the different paths here. So success there, but also the false branch leads to success as well. Just tidy that up. And as usual, if the cast fails for any reason, we'll do a finish execute and not tick the success button to the, the other success boolean here. So we can indicate that this actually failed. Right, now we are ready to set up our patrolling logic. That is done back on the behavior tree. There's four tasks that need to go underneath here and they're gonna, we'll probably give ourselves a little bit more room here to fit them in. First of all, we wanna set the walking speed to something lower than the chasing speed, like 200, which is a nice walk speed. Now we've already got our behavior tree task set walk speed there. Uh, it defaults to 200, and that's good. And we'll name this set patrol speed. Good. Now what do we need to do? We need to do that, that new task set target as waypoint. So in here we've got set target as waypoint. Um, yeah, we had a blackboard key selector in there, didn't we? So we need to remember to set that to what it should be. It should be the target key. If that's not showing up for you, 
then you didn't make this target key instantizable by opening this eye icon. Uh, what should we call this one? We'll put um, next waypoint as target. Then all we need to do is move to that waypoint. So we can use the built-in move to task again. And we'll call that, well, first of all, we'll set the Blackboard key that we want to move to to target. We'll rename that something like move to waypoint. And then the final task is going to be that last one that we made, that increment to the next waypoint. Behavior tree task, next waypoint. Um, there's no keys to set up. Let's just call that um, select next wait. Well, actually, it's increment waypoint counter, I guess. Increment waypoint. All right, so what's going to happen if we're in the patrolling state? Make sure we come at the right speed. Set the target on our blackboard as the waypoint we want to move to. Move to it increment our waypoint counter to the next waypoint and then the whole process will just keep going. So let's test that out. And, and because we set that to be able to abort self, if at any point during this process we see the player, we should go straight into this chasing state. Let's see. So first of all, is this guy actually patrolling around? Yep, see he's walking around to the, that waypoint down here. Then he'll start going to the next waypoint. If he sees me, he will go into the chase state. But then as soon as he loses sight, it will go back to his patrol thing, which you know, making him go back to whichever waypoint it was he was heading towards. I think he just reached that one. No coming around here, and no looping back around to waypoint zero again, which is what we wanted. Where is he? Actually, we'll get him to chase us. Yeah. So he catches sight of me, he will chase, and then when he loses sight, he just immediately forgets about us and goes back to patrolling. There you go. So that's not exactly perfectly realistic. So what we're going to do. In the next section is change that chase behavior so that if you can see the player the ai will chase the player like it does now but if it can't see the player it will go to the player's last known location and just wait there okay so i'll see you in the next section